Hi, my name is Andrew Greenfield. I'll be your narrator today on today's video for the Flash Core 4 module ransomware and anomaly detection on the Flash System 5300. Now, all this great work was done by Thomas Bish. He's a great guy. I've worked with him for the last six years easily on many projects and videos. And we've done some other videos together, too. You can see them in the metadata also about ransomware and Flash Core 4 modules. A lot of the work also was done by my developers on the right-hand side, Jay, Richard, and, of course, VJ have been fantastic on the Storage Insights side of the fence. Now let's take a look at ransomware. The sooner the better. In other words, we need to stop the infections as fast as possible. So this video is a short version of some other videos where we show the ransomware being detected and then immediately alerted on. In this case, it's gonna be on the Storage Insights side of the fence. But take a look, we do this using the Flash Core 4 modules onboard ASICs or CSDs. And the sooner we can actually respond and tell you that an infection's going on, we can stop it. And we're using the inference engine and the feature aggregation of all those patterns that the writes are showing on those Flash Core 4 modules at the bottom, upwards to the All Flash array, which we're then sending to the model training or Watson X in the cloud. And then we're going to generate an SI alert. That's right. So you'll see that it actually goes up to the actual engine and then confirms with the model and then moves up to SI so we can protect you faster and quicker. Now, we have other videos about this. This is one that Roman Pletka and his team in IBM Switzerland did that I also helped out with that goes into a deeper dive on just a single VM. We've also done some other videos, but here's a quick overview. Look on the left-hand side. You'll see that our Flash Core module is radically different than standard SSDs. There's a lot more features. But for today's video, take a look. We have 10 VMs going on. We're going to try to confuse the Flash Core modules like in a real production environment with lots of workloads and one will be infected. The VMDK actually will be infected itself. So take a look. It's a brocade switch, 32 gigs. We're going to be using two different volumes, although in this particular video and this run, we are not going to use the RDMA volume. We did another video. We're going to only use the data store. That's right. So it's going to be a shared file system across all those VMs. And I'm only wired up four ports. So this isn't a performance run of the 5300. We've got other videos about that. But you are going to see that we are going to use all 12 of the drives. All of them are the Flash Core 4 version. You can see the specs down below. And if you want to see a little bit more details, again, two different volumes, but we're only going to infect on the data store volume there, the VMDK. And the actual file system on each of these is down below on the lower right, as well as in the upper right, you'll actually see the standard file system across all the VMs. But VM1 actually has a couple other disks mounted to it as well. So we'll be infecting that. And in the next slide, you'll actually see slightly different version of that. So yes, we'll be using all of the VMs, VM1 through 10. VM1 is going to be the infected one though. And we'll be using the VMDK as the infection point, not the RDMA volume, which we tried in another video. So let's take a look at the screen here. Quick view, right? Let's going to go to our vCenter. You'll see VM1 and you'll see all those other disks we talked about. Again, nothing up my sleeves. You'll see that I've got all the other workers as separate VMs across different hosts. So you'll see this inside our VMware vCenter. And now let's go back to our main screen. You'll see in the upper right, that's where we're going to run the ransomware. In the upper left, you'll see that I have the alert already set up in Storage Insights. It's going to email all of us when we detect any of the ransomware on that 5300. You can see the block storage system. Now we're going to do the workload in the lower right. I'm going to start the workloads now. You'll see with the arrows, each one of those VMs, VMs 2 through 10, I'm going to start the IO zone workload. So that workload's going to go off right now. And as you can see on the upper right, we still haven't done anything on the ransomware side yet. We're just going to kick off the workload. Now, in the lower left, you'll see the performance start kicking off. Now, we've kicked off the ransomware. And I've sped up this part because I don't want to keep you and all the other stuff. We've started the infection. So you can see that in the middle part of the screen, which reflects back to the magnified version of the red upper right. And there it is. We got our first alert at 8%. 8% we were able to detect the ransomware, and we sent the alert out. Now let's take a look at what that means. So that means that it sent out an email and inside Storage Insights, you'll see that I actually have the screen here where it actually shows the M disk, the actual volume, and we can go to different places. You'll see the actual ESX 77 host, which actually shows the particular host that was affected by this. We can go a little deeper dive just by going into the alert only page, as you can see here. Again, we're showing off the volume, the host, 
and the actual array that we'll actually take a look at here. Now, this is in regular time versus the sped up infection point. But still, 8% is far better than anything else. And again, you can see the hosts. You can actually see the definition of the ransomware alert, the anomaly detection that we found on the workload itself using the wanna laugh script, which is a very good test to see if you've got good things. And of course, last but not least, here's my outlook. Here's that email I told you about. You can see where it was triggered. You can see that it was sent out to me, Jay, as well as Tom. So take a look at this real quickly. And of course, it has the link back to the storage insights. Thanks again for watching this video. If you have any questions, please reach out to any and all of us. I look forward to seeing you at an upcoming IBM event or perhaps online at a web conference.